Am I unmuted now? Turn that off. So this was unbelievable. This the most amazing introduction I've ever done in my entire <laughs> life. Um, <laughs> and I was actually saying, um, well, it doesn't matter what I said. I'll have to say it again. The um, I, I, uh, lots of hopes and dreams out there about the work and about life in general, but never, never, ever in my wildest dreams that I think I would be having a webinar originating from Dubai. Um, but that is exactly where I am. Um, I actually have a clock. I don't know if you can see it. Yep, right up there. That is midnight um, because there is a nine-hour difference between here and, and Eastern Standard Time. Um, and these are tired uh, broad guys uh, because I know this is like a fine, fine line right now. Um, and so I want to give a little bit of an update what's happened over the, over the last month. Um, a, a month or so ago, um, we've agreed, thanks to Corwin, um, Corwin Press and, and Shindig, um, to, to use their platform. And, and I said this the last time we worked with Shindig, so impressed with them and the whole operation. So for us, it's a great medium that we, could, we can communicate with, whether I'm Dubai or anywhere else. Um, quick update over the last, over the last month since, since we had this last webinar with our demonstration sites. I looked at my calendar, and in the 26 days, I've been to four different countries, eight different states. Um, and proud to say right now, I believe we're going to have another demonstration site in, um, in Dubai at the Universal American School, which, aside from me being up at this time, I am so proud and happy that Andy Torres, the director of the school, um, and the equivalent for us in the States is basically a superintendent that is uh, an elementary school, a middle school, and a high school. He has agreed to stay up till midnight. Um, of course, just so that you know, I asked him if he'd be willing to participate in this because we get to go to our different sites and people will be able to hear him. So Gracious said, of course I will do that. And then I said what time it was going to happen. Um, and he couldn't say no after that. Um, but, but but he is on, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to Andy. We know the sequence where we're going to go. After I talk to Andy, I'm going to turn this uh, and ask uh, Chris Fox if she could spend just a couple minutes uh, or a few minutes talking about our age three to grade three work. I'll then turn it over to Mickey, um, who you all know, Mickey Corso, who is our chief academic officer to kind of talk about the work going on at demonstration sites. A um, little challenge for you to think about, and then we'll wrap up um, with some kind of discussions with Andy. So I'm going to turn this right over now um, to Andy. Again, I, I hope this is all coming off clear and, and to the point, but I, I've asked Andy to talk a little bit um, about the school because as a demonstration site, we're, we're going to be working together, and you're going to get to know him and, and the school um, a, a whole a whole lot more. Um, I, I just got this this piece from Zach. So just, Zach, just so you know, Eric. I mean, um, Andy is right next to me, so he doesn't need to sign in because we're going to share the computer in just a second. But that is a great question. Um, so Andy is, as I said, the director of the school. I've asked him to talk about the school a little bit, his vision for the school, which, which I've heard and incredibly impressed by, because believe me, I wouldn't be in Dubai just because it's on the way to somewhere, um, <laughs> and how he sees the student voice and, and the teacher voice work coming together. So with no more further ado, I'm going to turn this over. And there is a man that looks like he's awake, actually. And, <laughs> and this is Andy Charles. So Andy, please, if you would share with the crew what's, what's well, you going know, on. Like, I, I keep reminding you that uh, when you work in the Middle East, uh, all life happens after the sun goes down. Because <laughs> um, it's, kind of, it's, it's kind of a survival skill, especially when the weather is really very warm. Uh, good morning or afternoon or whatever you guys are. Um, my name is Andy Torres. I am the director of Universal American School. This is the second, my second academic year at this school. Uh, um, this is a school of about 1,500 students, just short of that, a few students. Um, and we are located in the Dubai, Dubai Festival City area of the city of Dubai. Dubai, is, uh, as a city, is about five and a half million people. And uh, so we have um, a very diverse uh, school community here. Um, 80 nationalities, uh, we have some unique uh, um, dynamics that come along with that. Um, Dubai is a very unusual place to run schools in that virtually everyone who lives in Dubai is uh, from someplace else. Um, uh, the, the local population uh, for this community, this city, is less than, 
depending on who you ask, uh, 15, 12, 10 percent. Um, and uh, so uh, you, you just have to realize my screen's going a little crazy here, guys. Uh, I'm assuming everything's okay. Oh yes, um, I see you again. Thank you. Uh, I'm assuming that you know the you know the the assumption is that the local population um, is is much smaller than that. Actually, the government's been pretty quiet about uh, the numbers. Uh, my school, as a, uh, a community, is um, uh, largely uh, students from uh, other Middle Eastern countries: um, Lebanon, Egypt, um, Syria, uh, Iran. Oman, um, uh, seven percent local students, but then beyond that, uh, there's a population of students from all over the world: uh, Europeans, Australians, uh, New Zealanders, uh, Southeast Asians, and so on. Um, so and your faculty represents somewhat not, not represents that population, but your faculty is, is pretty diverse. Yeah, well. it's an interesting group. Uh, I mean, we're largely North American, uh, certainly, but uh, I think uh, you'll also, you know, I think you like to, to you would like to say that. Uh, we try to balance uh, the, 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 you know, the, to the true ideal of an international school, mm -hmm. um, and that means you know we, we should all come from somewhere, and uh, it should be somewhere different. Um, so you know it, it's 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 a fun place to work. It really is a fun place to work. It's dynamic. People bring lots of different perspectives to the to the place, um, and uh, you know, and we're we're really trying to give the students here a, an experience that is. Um, in line with uh, what the world is they live in mm -hmm. uh, is a unique uh, Dubai um, uh, context. Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, what, where do you yeah. want me to go with no, this? No, I, I think that's <laughs> great. So just for logistics, well, right, so that's the big screen. So Andy and I are working off this other screen. So we actually have two computers going. I'm sure none of you care <laughs> on the other side of the world. Um, but I, I tell you, one of the things I found the most interesting, well, a lot of things interesting, the diversity in the school, a lot of diverse schools. Yeah. But tonight we had a parent forum, and it, it's 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 different in the sense that it's not only a cultural issue when I think of inner city and rural schools, but they bring four, five, six hundred years to the show. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing I was really struck by in Dubai is the complexity of the diversity, and we talked about this today a number of times. But you go to the mall, which is actually funny. So. Uh, we go to a mall, we think, oh, this is pretty big. Then I come to find out we're like in the smallest mall you know, <laughs> in the country. And then last night, go to dinner in a mall. And believe it or not, and this will be interesting to the people that live in the mountains um, and go to ski resorts, they have a ski resort inside the mall. Um, and, that, and I'm not talking like a little, it, it's, it's such a crazy thing. Yeah. And the, the irony that I see, we're walking through the mall, um, they have a prayer room for women. And literally diagonally across is a Victoria's Secret. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've got people dressed in the near garb and, and covered up. And then the next minute you see someone else going down yep. of a Westerner, or not even a Westerner, but um, somebody from the UAE. Could be from anywhere. Yeah. Africa could be from uh, you know, Northern Europe. Could be somebody from America. Could be somebody from yeah. Southeast Asia. I mean, you just never know. Uh, it's, it's really... Uh, it's a it's a city of, uh, of of conflict with visual perspectives, but yeah. at the same time, there's very little conflict around the human experience. Right. People have a, a live and let live sort of attitude here, um, and um, you know, and, and a level of acceptance you will even see in the same families. Uh, traditional uh, uh, Muslim wear, uh, ladies covering their heads, maybe yeah. even their faces. And their daughters of 16, 17 years old walking next to them down the hall with short shorts on and bikini strap uh, tops on at the same time. It, it's just really quite odd. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know that's that's the, that's the vision of uh, the the ruling family here. Mm -hmm. um, they they you know see the the, the the Dubai as really the gathering place of the world um, that enhances their security um, that ensures their future. Um, they're, they're trying to diversify the, the, the foundation of the economics in this country uh, to be more um, in line with uh, globalization and uh, less reliant on oil and gas uh, and um, energy sources. And, and so they're looking for different ways. And so we, we are, we're experiencing a, a big push from uh, the, the local aid community to 
um, infuse innovation and creativity, uh, a lot of 21st century skill uh, work. They're, you know, constantly pushing us to, to examine our results and, and try to raise the, the standard of education in this community, yeah. in this city, to a level where they feel they can be globally competitive. But competitiveness is not just to be the top of the heap for them. They see uh, being competitive as it's a way to draw people here, mm -hmm. to diver diversify their economic, diversify their community, and be, have it be a center for you know education, uh, for, for community uh, uh, development and, yeah. and, and, and the center of the but, world. You, you, I'll, I'll crack you though, Dubai really is on the way to every place in the world. Yeah. It's the busiest airport in the world. Besides and I believe Atlanta, that. From besides Atlanta. Okay. Besides Atlanta. Atlanta yeah. Uh, it is literally the busiest airport really? in the world. Yes, it is. Wow. And I, I will tell you this, and, and, and Andy shared this with us after the, the first day, was the, the city comes alive at night. It's like there are, and you said it's like yeah. this nocturnal environment. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, and, it's a, and it's a necessity of life because it's hot here. It, it yeah. gets very, very, very warm. For American, you know, 115, 110, 115 degrees is not an unusual temperature during the day from about the 1st of July until the end of October. Yep. Um, so it's it's unbearable and it's humid. Uh, other than when I'm laying up, just spending a few days in England freezing, um, come to find out it's been the coldest day in five years when we land. So we, that, we're, we're thanking them. They, they, they brought uh, yes. uh, humidity and, yeah. and uh, precipitation, which yeah. we needed. So I, uh, Dr. Landy is here with me, which a number of you know. Um, she's on the board in, in England. and. Came over here because the original interest was around teacher voice and so on. So, so it was an amazing opportunity, and I kept on promising Lisa. I'm saying, don't worry, why is going to be hot? It'll be beautiful. Come and honest to goodness, it, it's. I mean, it was cold for us even, and it, it's the first time I've worn this long sleeve shirt in two <laughs> years. Uh, yeah, Quite <laughs> stress. yeah, perfect. Um, but I'll tell you what what intrigues me the most about the school is, and I don't say this lately, but it's the people here. Um, and I said this night to the parents. Incredibly genuine, um, humble in the sense where they, they want to improve. They, mm -hmm. the, there's so much going on here. Yeah. Um, and I think it's an American mentality. I tell my parents coming to the Middle East, it's like, ah, you're more Americanized in your downtown than we're Americanized in America. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it, it's a little bit of a shock. It, it's like a culture, culture, culture shock. And yeah. It, and it's an interesting thing for me to witness. But the kids live in a, in a culture that's embedded. Literally hundreds of years of mm. the passion of the parents and, and so on. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I think uh, more than anything, I think our, my parent community is highly concerned about their children's futures because they, their mm. Dubai on one hand is really fantastic place, easy place to live mm. as a <laughs> as a you know an immigrant migrant uh, worker myself. I, that's right. what I consider myself to be. Um, you know, you settle in and you know where things are. People speak English and yeah. you can get stuff done. It's, easy. it's really is it's easy. Really and I've easy. lived in Saudi Arabia. I've lived in Ch mainland China. Uh, you know, and those two places are much different than this experience here. Yeah. Um, and our parents realize the ease of, of the life of these kids. Yeah. It yeah. leads these kids also to be quite complacent in their lives. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, because of the ease of their life and, and, you know, servants are not an unusual thing to have here. We, yeah. we, you we, asked the parents tonight, say, how many of you have people that live in that take care of the kids? Every single every hand went up, except hand one up. person you called her out and she's, oh yeah, I do too. Uh -huh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> every Actually, single that person. person was the middle school uh, principal. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't realize that. <laughs> yeah. That was Pat. That was Pat. So, uh, that is yeah, too yeah, funny. Yeah, I didn't yeah. even see who was yeah. the like, no, 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 Pat. I know you have somebody clean your house. Don't, oh don't give me that. I didn't see uh, your point. That's pretty funny. That's pretty but, funny. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we all have uh, household help. Uh, yeah. and, you know, the, 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 the conversations in the faculty rooms in this school are quite amusing. Yeah. Because people are like, well, you'll never guess what my maid ruined in the uh, in the washer today. Uh, well, you know, guys, they put on the sheets on our bed backwards. It's crazy stuff you hear. Yeah, um, that's, a, that's a huge issue. In this our is house, a, really, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure. Um, um, so but, you know, it, you know, it's that it's that mentality though that is really drives you know a lot of our concerns for our students yeah, uh, at this right. school. Well, um, and one of the discussions today was you know how we do in our other sites we'll do parent workshops and seminars. We talked today about yeah. Um, who's bringing up these kids and who's dropping them off at school, getting the kids ready, who's making sure they're doing their homework and mm -hmm. working for school. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and I, I, there's obviously tons we can learn from each other.
Yeah. Can you spend a couple minutes, and I'll turn it over to Chris, um, talking about kind of your vision, not about the school, because you did that, but where do you see the student voice aspirations, teacher voice aspirations, enhancing where you want to go? Because the school's good. I mean, the school's beyond it. I mean, it, it's a special place. Um, it's not like there's a need issue out so uh, to take us wherever. Um, but you saw a complimentary piece, and I think it's important for them to hear, because they all, people on watching this, coming from very different places but maybe the same reason why boards is yeah well and you know i was i was saying you know this is my second year in the uh, in the school and uh, i uh, when i landed here in uh, august of 2014 i spent time assessing the organization speaking to kids going into classrooms talking to parents and so on and, and really what it 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 came evident is a couple of, of some significant concerns on my part. Some of it was academic, some of it was just behavioral and affective. Uh, some of it also was just the uh, the approach that some of the, the school was taking uh, to the problem solving methodology. Um, so let, let me just go down through that. And I don't mean these to sound as negatives because I think every school is a work in progress. And, mm -hmm. and, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm trying to be you know, as positive about this, these kind of things. Cause bottom line is, it is a good school. It's, it's operating well. The kids are well taken care of. They feel loved. They'll yeah, tell you that. They no know question. they feel loved. Yeah. Um, and, and they then, love the teachers, and too. They love the teachers. Great. They love like, the teachers. I can just care about them yeah, yeah, over yeah, and over yeah, yeah. And, it's, and, they, and they are darling children. I mean, they look you through the eye. They, they take care of you. They, they're, they're this natural interactivity that they uh, you know, that, are, that, that, that is of their culture mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, and there's a missus here, and, and uh, it's a lot of respect for, for adults here. But... Um, there's also significant passivity yeah. in the way they learn, yeah. and uh, it, it's certainly almost to the point of it's an expectation that the adults deliver, and we are supposed to at least try to make them think that we're listening to them. Yeah. Um, and you know, and if if there is some sort of you know maybe you know struggle or perhaps failure mm -hmm. uh, with the students. There's a, there, there immediately goes to the blame game. And, you know, that's not something that's unusual in schools, but usual in our context. Yeah. You don't see that in international schools very often. You know, the, the, first of all, we're expensive. Our kids are, our parents are paying a lot of money for to come to this school. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, and generally with that comes a lot of pressure from the parents to the kids. The kids know the mom and dads are expending a good, pretty yeah. good chunk of change. And so, the, you know, they try a little harder. You know, maybe they, there's a little edge to it. You don't get that here. There, there's, there's, there's passivity. Really, there's not the ownership, I guess, with uh, from the kids that I see uh, with their learning. Um, it's, it's just kind of like, well, it's your job to teach me. Yeah, and, uh, and, and over and over and over again, I, I saw this sort of activity, and, and you know, then I started talking to teachers, and, and the thing I started hearing was. You know, not specific student names, not specific student instances, but the words, those kids. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of like, you know, where, where I come from, you use that, and it turns into a derogatory term pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and, then it becomes us against them. Yeah, 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 exactly. And, and I, uh, I, I became, I started to become fearful. Point two was, um, our achievement uh, progress. Um, we use uh, the NOEA Measure of Academic Progress uh, test as our, our sort of organizational baseline around our student achievement. We're a common core school. We're an IB PYP school. Which is and an international baccalaureate. Yeah, a primary years program, international baccalaureate prime years program, and an international baccalaureate diploma program school. So both of those are, are, are intensive, rigorous academic programs. Um, so we should be getting strong results uh, just by the nature of the program itself. What I was seeing was over a third of our students are not meeting uh, grade level expectations mm. uh, using using you know standardized uh, measurements and and uh, uh, and the Common Core standards mm -hmm. um, uh, in literacy in particular in literacy. Now we have a high number of students. Who are uh, English second language learners, right? But which speak actually better English than our first language learners, and, my <laughs> and oftentimes, and often they're, they're they speak three languages in my yeah. school: French, uh, Arabic, and English. Right. Often, 
Um, and, you know, these kids still are not engaging with their coursework. They're, they're just not seeing the importance of it. They're, they're living in a, often in virtual worlds, in technology worlds, uh, with screens. Yeah. Um, our, our circulation in our libraries is really low. Yeah. And, and my, my literacy levels are horrible. I, I, I mean, we, we run a high level school that kids are going to, everybody's going to go off to university. So that doesn't bode well for those yeah. kids who are leaving, who are not meeting those grade level standards. Right. They're going to struggle and struggle significantly. So that's, that's my, that's my second point. My third point is one that is around the teacher culture in the school. Um, uh, I, again, we're, we have lovely people here and they work and they're all working very, very, very hard. I, I did some brainstorming before uh, Russell and Lisa came out with my uh, curriculum council, and we did some, you know, just give me some ideas on what where you think we're we're connecting with self worth, engagement, and purpose. Just, just let's just make some do some list. Just you know, yeah. sort of a, a data gathering activity for me. And they, it's up here on my wall here in my yeah. office. It's, it's it's full of stuff. The problem is, it's full of little individual isolated siloed activities all the way through this organization and um, you know it, it it just tells me that you know we're all working really hard we're just not in the same direction on top of that we have a bunch of teachers and bunches of teams who are just kind of waiting around for the administration to tell them what to do yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that scares me because mm -hmm. that, that's not a way that I can sustainably improve the school they know that, they've heard me say this, but then over and over and over again, the, it, it, then is that another conversation? It's the, it's the they, it's yeah. been us, it's the them, and it's you guys need to tell us what we want. Yeah. And uh, the, the buy-in is you know, not there necessarily, although they want to buy in, they want to be involved. Uh, we, we, just, we need to do a better job of listening to each other yeah. on the internal side of the house. Um, now, granted, we've had a lot of administrative turnover in the school. Uh, well, and staff turnover, what, 30 some percent 30, last year? 33% last year. We'll right. do, uh, we're, we've cut that in half this year. We're going to be right around 15 this year. Uh, but um, yeah, yeah, it's been it's been pretty dramatic. Um, well, and it's interesting, and I'll turn this over to Chris and just say, but what's interesting, people that have been working with us for a while know those quadrants pretty well. And it's almost like school wise, it's a little bit of the hibernation stage yeah. where they can dream more and they can. Do more, even though they're working really hard. So, so I look at the school as kind of this between the the, the hibernation. Of, they're all working incredibly hard, mm -hmm. but their expectations only for the kids but for themselves can be higher. And yeah, it, it's what excites me about the school, and it, and it was excites me quite frankly about you as an administrator as well as your other administrators at the school, where it, it could easily be passive of saying yeah, we're doing fine, we're doing fine. Enrollments are up, you're not down in enrollments, yeah. you're still growing. It's a spectacular building. Um, Technologies, every, and you have all the pieces there, so you could easily kind of coast along, but you're not, which is exciting for us to be yeah, part of that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I mean, the, the, the people whom I, I, you know, I, I, I connect with in my personal yeah. uh, career, my personal professional side of my life, I just don't, I don't get that. I yeah. mean, we're here to help kids. Yeah. We're, we're here to make them, you know, bigger, better, more amazingly big thinkers. Yeah. You know, the IB uh, profile, and, and we're an IB school, and uh, and you know, what that means is to make the world a better place. Yep. And, yeah. and you know, everybody around here believes that to be true. They absolutely believe it. Yeah. And, and the community does too. It's not just yes. a school yes. thing, which yes. is it's yes. pretty awesome. Matter of fact, we met with parents today. And yeah, absolutely. They, yeah. I mean, they want their kids to be international leaders at yeah. the, the, the end of the day. I, and I was, want would be an understatement, actually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe demand yeah, that, uh, in an unhealthy way at times. <laughs> <laughs> we let that mean. I said, hey, this is why I'm not an administrator anymore. Uh, um, anyway, oh my, well, this is how good it is. It's like that half hour just flew, or at least for us anyway. Um, but I think is, is you look at the other sites and the other demo sites now, they're mm -hmm. all over the place. Um, is, we can learn lots. We can learn lots from what you're doing here, and I think certainly we learn lots from our from our sites. Um, could, Zach, could we bring up Chris Fox? Hopefully she's still there and just talk a couple minutes. Um, I see where it's, uh, we've got two computers going on here at the same time because mine's kind of screwy. And, oh, Chris. Um, Chris, can you hear us? I can't hear you. You on mute, maybe? Uh, 
Um, Zach, can you hear? Or maybe we can't hear. I don't know. Well, oh, go ahead. No, that's me talking. Can you? Um, oh, Shindig's trying to fix this. Well, Shindig's trying to fix this. Mickey, can you hear me? Can you? Oh, we should just keep on going because we are sounding very <laughs> impressive to each other anyway. Um, uh, Zach, I'm just wondering if you could pop up maybe on the screen and tell us what's going on maybe. Here comes Zach. Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm trying to help Chris uh, troubleshoot right now. So, um, well, we can, bring it. can we bring it, Nikki? While yeah, we're sure. For Chris, yeah, we'll do that right now. How easily we got rid of Dr. Fox. <laughs> Hi, can you yes, hear Mickey? me? Yeah, I can hear you. Great. Um, I, I can. Oh, look, I, I can tell by. Um, I can tell by the gleam in your eyes, Mick. The um, what's going on here? Um, because it's it's pretty exciting and pretty cool. So I know we Andy and I and the rest could go on forever, but I think it would be important, mm. obviously, which is why we do these, is to share what's going on on these other demonstration sites, so Andy can learn from that, and and obviously the other demonstrate sites can learn from each other. So I hand it over to you, there, partner. Yeah, no, I'm I'm uh, I'm taking lots of notes uh, based on what Andy's saying because I know I'm going there. So uh, and I'm looking forward to that, um, and I'm really curious. Uh, to meet your, your your entire staff and the students there. I, I always hear um, things in systems terms. So when you say the kids kind of have the same problems as the grown-ups have and maybe your administrators have the same problem too or you didn't say that waiting around for people, other people to tell them what to do. So uh, that, that typically in our eyes defines a systemic problem. Um, you know, even though <laughs> they have because you brought them all. <laughs> yeah. Was there an over and under on how, how soon it would be till Mickey said systems? Um, so, uh, so we do have some schools here that we're working with um, that are a little further along the aspirations journey than uh, you guys are for, for us being there for the first time. Um, and that's kind of what they're working on. That's kind of the approach they take, you know, shifts to changing their policies, changing the, their procedures, uh, reworking the way they make decisions even to include students uh, in that decision making. We were just... Um, I haven't been to eight countries, but I've been to Youngstown, Ohio recently. Um, and, uh, you know, we're just working with a great principal there. She, she was going to be here. She's not here. Susan Koulianis uh, at Harding Elementary School. And they are more and more at Harding shifting um, decision making, not to the kids necessarily, but to a partnership between the students and the and adults. Um, so that not just grown ups going off to fix problems that kids identify. Um, but rather uh, students and teachers working together to solve problems. Most recently at that school, it was a cafeteria, an issue in the cafeteria um, where the noise level was just out of control. And rather than, you know, the typical traditional command and control, um, an adult raising their voice to get kids to quiet down and behave and put the trays away and all that, um, they've decided to have an aspirations team there, a student team. They've decided to turn that problem um, over to that team and to work to have that team work together with the students to solve it. Uh, and there are numerous examples. Youngstown has been working with us for about five years now. And there are numerous, numerous examples of where uh, schools are working more at that structural level um, to, to sort of change the way they do things, um, not to move away from, I, I've been there, that, uh, that wall of sticky notes, you know, that's just these little individual efforts. Um, but to get everybody moving in the same direction. Um, and another, uh, somebody who's here, I wonder, can we bring him up on stage, actually? Joey, I tried to send him an IM, Joey Slade, who's in Oklahoma City. He's a, a middle school principal in Oklahoma City. Um, and Joey, if you're willing, I'd love to have Zach bring you up um, just for a quick update on what's going on there in Oklahoma City, because I think you too, your school is, is, is making intentional decisions to move towards more uh, systematic solutions to student voice, self-worth, engagement, purpose issues in your school. So I don't know, Zach, um, can you pull up Joey Sleet real quick? Cool. 
Hello. Can you hear me all right? Hey, yeah, you are now in you are now in Dubai. Hey, I've always wanted to go to Dubai. Uh, it looks like a fantastic place um, from all the pictures I see. Um, you know, uh, Webster, we're in our second year, and um, you know, um, this is my first year uh, as a as a head principal there. So um, we have a lot of we've had a lot of turnover. Um, and I got one of my, this is actually my teacher of the year, Karen Mann, um, and uh, she, is, she is one of my uh, great partners um, on our um, Quiza journey. Um, but I will say, you know, as, um, as Mickey was talking about earlier, uh, our systematic approach to fixing the, um, um, the system issues um, were very, very evident uh, when I came into the school. Um, I looked at the survey um, over the summer when I first got um, when I first got the job, and it showed me some some glaring issues that needed to be addressed: um, hallway behavior, um, lunchroom behavior, um, students not being able to go outside because um, um, they couldn't handle the 30 minutes of lunch slash recess. And so, um, really, we began developing um, you know system um, approaches to that. And really listening to the student voice and saying, "Hey, we really want to go outside, um, and we really want to uh, um, use our cell phones um, during that time." And so, as we allowed that, and as as we began, you know, setting up procedures for that, and really being um, intentional about those procedures, we have seen, you know, less than 15 percent of our discipline referrals um, have resulted in that hallway or lunch room. Um, and even less than that, at uh, one percent of our um, actual discipline referrals have um, um, accompanied the the time outside into the uh, um, where there was so much fear last year of uh, we can't let them go outside because they're going to fight or they're going to do this or that, um, and uh, and so that has that has really dramatically dropped. So um, I will say, from a system standpoint, our data shows a lot of good uh, growth in that area. I think that's great. Joey, I just, just want to jump in there. Uh, I got turned off. I think. Um, when you mentioned that you had the teacher of the year with you, so you know, the the she's on. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure because of the Pretty sure because of the of the year. And what's your, what's the, what's the, what's the, I didn't even catch the name. I didn't even catch Karen, okay. Karen Mann, um, Karen Mann, and then yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. Was that um, a question? <laughs> um, can I? I, can I just got a text from Zach, and it says that Chris's mic is fixed. Could we bring up Chris Fox to give us a quick update um, on ASP? And, and thanks again, Joey and, and Karen. Awesome, awesome work, Dr. Fox. I can see your forehead. I still can't hear you. I think you're on mute. Is it working? Well, now it is. And thank it's God nice. you're in charge of the research and not technology. It really isn't on mute. Is it? Can you hear it? Yeah, now I can. OK. Yeah. All righty. It's, it's very typical that Mickey and Russ always put me on mute, so this isn't surprising. Um, thank you, Joey and Karen. Uh, you're doing great things there. I've been working with Quiza quite some time, and what's been interesting is we've spent a lot of our energy and research looking into students in grade three, or grade 12, and it was actually the schools themselves, the preschool teachers, the kindergarten, first grade teachers who wanted more resources and wanted more information on what does voice look like for this population. And out of that came a research project that we're working on now, which is age three to grade three. So we're in a variety of schools from England out to California and Florida and talking and doing research on our youngest learners. Um, we're trying to find out what voice means to them, what types of decisions they have that they get to make. Um, are they comfortable asking questions? And what continues to amaze me as well as my colleagues who are doing this is how many thoughts and ideas the youngest learners have about learning. Um, they're very articulate. Uh, Brian and I did 
focus groups with four-year-olds a few weeks ago, and um, I, you know we couldn't have scripted their answers any better. And so it's an exciting new area for us to, we've worked with the kindergartners for second grade a lot, but we've never sort of really gone after and studied them at the level we're doing. So we're hoping at the end of this project that we have some more insights into help, helping teachers and supporting teachers of kids in that age range. Um, so stay tuned. We're just collecting and gathering all the data at this point. And if Dubai is interested in uh, collecting some data from uh, for us, that would be great as well. We could have a conversation about that. Great. Can, Chris, can you share any kind of uh, initial findings? Or at least, I know you haven't got all the composite together yet because literally every field team person is doing it. Uh, any I would say one of the things we're finding with the youngest students right now, and I'm not sure that it's surprising, but I think it's not a direction that people uh, want to be hearing, is that for the youngest learners, um, voice is very much about just following directions, uh, doing what they're told, and then that means uh, they're a good kid, they're a good student. So the idea that I might have a separate opinion or a thought or idea, and obviously we're using terminology that three and four year olds understand, but it's really about um, doing what I'm told. So it's something to begin to consider, you know, how do we help three and four year olds understand that they have their own valuable independent thoughts and they don't have to always be uh, mimicking what, you know, a peer next to them says or what they're learning from a teacher. So the challenge is with the youngest learners is being able to balance teaching kids the necessary social skills to be part of school, which does involve sitting and being quiet and not jumping out of your chair, but then creating opportunities for them to begin practicing voice when they're three and four. So by the time they're up in the middle school and high school setting, uh, using your voice and being actively involved and being an agent uh, for your own learning, it, it, that's all you've known about learning. So I think that's really that, that goal of that it's not, you know, by the time kids get to middle school, we don't have to create opportunities for them to use their voice because that's what learning is. Um, so I would just say that's some of the preliminary one. We're not really finding with the younger kids um, a whole lot of differences between the males and females yet. Um, so again, early stages of analysis, but I would say that's some of the, some of the findings that are surfacing. Thanks, Chris. Interestingly enough, I'm pretty sure those three-year-olds don't know the difference between males and females either at this point. Uh, so that, that, that could be one of the reasons why. Um, but thank you for sharing that. And, and you know, to Chris's point, I mean, it, we're doing stuff from California to England to, to Idaho to Florida to New York, where Peter Dwight's doing some work with us there. So it, it, we're hitting the broadest of, of all spectrums, which is which is actually really cool. New Hampshire, where Brian is actually as well. Um, so that, thanks, Chris, for that update. I really appreciate it. Uh, that report will be coming out in a couple of months, I guess, the initial report, and then it's going to go to a full-blown research piece. This is kind of the, the pre-research piece to see if this thing's worth even looking at, because um, it's a challenge for us, quite frankly, and you know, we're all going to have different experiences with it. Can we, Zach, can we bring Mickey back up again? Again, thank you, Chris. Um, up and up. This is like so good. That this is working well. The only thing that's not working well is actually my computer, but we can at least see because I got Lisa's <laughs> computer going. And, and we look very high tech here, albeit it's, lost. I have a photograph of it. Yeah, we have a photograph. We have, we have proof right here. Um, so, Mick, go ahead. Back to you. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Joey, for jumping up there. Um, I was hoping you would say that thing about we have expectations, not rules. I love that. Uh, we I've actually shared that. That's a thing at, at Joey's school. We relate it to confidence to take action and leadership and responsibility, part of our framework. Um, and, and Joey just had a very uh, succinct way of saying, you know, we, if you have rules, kids can break rules. Uh, but if you have expectations, you can't break an expectation. It's just, it, it's, it is what it is. We expect you to walk this way in the hallway or behave this way in the cafeteria. And I think in the data that he was sharing through that approach, you're seeing that kids are rising to those expectations. And we know kids do that. Right? They, they rise um, or lower themselves if we have low expectations. Um, another just comment about Oklahoma City, they have um, made student voice a key pillar of their uh, great commitment. It's a district-wide plan uh, for improving the schools in Oklahoma City. And after a community study there, um, you know, among getting kids reading scores and math scores up um, and doing culturally relevant pedagogy, 
uh, many of those things. St uh, school, uh, school voice, student voice, and teacher voice is a key part of their uh, efforts to improve that district. Um, and Joey School is one of six demonstration sites in a very large district. It's uh, sort of the tip of the spear there in Oklahoma City. Um, I mentioned earlier Youngstown, Ohio, and, and Susan Kolianis' school. That's another district that continues to imagine ways that student voice can be part of decision making up and down the entire system. So many of the schools in Youngstown now have um, students who have a seat on the building leadership teams there. Um, you know, first that was met with uh, a lot of trepidation and, and skepticism on the part of the adults on the building leadership teams, but um, increasingly adults are growing more comfortable with that, in part because uh, students and teachers working in partnerships solve problems better together. Um, they come up with better solutions. Um, and now like, you know, starting to move in. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Mick. This is obviously this is a tad bit of a delay. I just wanted to share because it, it's critical what you're talking about. What's it been interesting for us to see this with different demonstrations, like literally now all over the world, is that concentrating on the culture of the school because we don't cross that curriculum line. And you heard me talk about that yep. today. Yet at the same time, the learning in the classroom is enhancing. So scores are going up. I look at the schools in England um, that we've been working with now for a really long time. Now they're ours. Um, they're purposely saying, well, we're going to go in, they're going to raise test scores, we're going to do this, that, and the other thing. But because we shifted that culture a little bit um, and to move, and I love, Nick, what you talked about, the, the, and, and Joey, what they're talking about is moving from rules to expectation and the expectations for people to be successful, they, it's a given. And now when you go to the schools, it's, that's what they talk, they, it's their assumption they're going to be successful. Mm -hmm. um, and so I look at these byproducts around discipline and things where you would really be able to point the finger at and what we're seeing is some academic growth that we, I guess we expect it, but it's nice to see it now uh, across the board. Go ahead, Nick. Yeah, no, it's, that's it. It's that culture, I think, that then brings up all the other things schools are concerned about. Um, obviously, academic achievement. But also behavior issues and uh, and even can I say like quality of life issues for both the kids and the adults. Uh, adults' lives get better uh, when students do better academically and uh, you know behave better, and that's what we're seeing as well. Um, so right up up and down in in, in Youngstown because they've been at it for four years now. District leadership teams too are starting to imagine. Uh, ways of including kids. Um, the superintendent, there, uh, the interim superintendent, there recently made time in his schedule to to give some high school kids a hearing who are having trouble with um, that they have their moving kids between high school, one high school, and their their uh, uh, career school. So uh, that's great. I, I'm, I'm very excited about what's happening in Youngstown. Susan Inman, who uh, is there under Sue, um, uh, is, is spearheading that work there. Uh, Somerville, Massachusetts is another place that's, uh, boy, year seven in the pipeline. <laughs> uh, they, don't, they don't need much help from us anymore, except they keep inviting us to come and do PD. Um, they've actually assigned an administrator in that district in central office to a quarter time position who oversees all the aspirations work now. Uh, and that's, that's great. Statewide work in Montana continues to roll forward. Um, and that sort of all the traditional schools have, have gotten on board with that. Uh, the juvenile detention centers are saying we want a piece of that too. Uh, how do you, I'm not quite sure how you do student voice uh, and so forth and engagement and purpose in a school that kids are um, they are because they're incarcerated. But we're going to figure it out, and we're going to figure it out with the help of the kids there, the students in those um, you know in that situation, uh, because we believe they should have a voice as well. Um, uh, Sequoia, uh, Russ mentioned Sequoia uh, Unified School District, the high school district there where Brian Connolly works. Um, in addition to having a demonstration site there, that's a, I think year five, uh, Woodside High School. They're starting to expand throughout the district into the other high schools there, uh, mostly through work with kids who are uh, getting themselves in a bind behaviorally, um, and then using some of our resources to grow those kids. Uh, you've, you've heard us use those buzzwords, self-worth, engagement, purpose. So to grow that in those challenged students uh, or put themselves in that bad position because of their behavior and then um, having worked on that, as Russ said, you know, let's now let's see what your academics, th those kids don't get in trouble because they can't do the math um, or, you know, don't like the books that were assigned. Those kids get in trouble because they feel alienated, they, they don't feel like there's a hero with their life they can talk to because of concerns at school, they, um, they're bored. 
you know, the, the, so the opposite is that uh, fun and excitement in our framework. So, and again, Nick, we're seeing. I... Uh, Oh, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. Finish that, and then I'll jump in. I'm sorry. Um, I, and this will be my last comment. Again, I, I just want to say that we're seeing central offices, districts making good, what we would say, are, are the right decisions in moving student voice uh, deeper into their decision-making processes. And that's what's making the difference. Um, it's, you know, we, could have a, we have a lot of well-meaning adults in school, but until they take seriously the voice of the students, uh, who are their partners, Russ says this all the time, their partners, not their clients, not their customers, their partners, um, until they take that seriously, and what we're seeing in these districts is that they are, not much is probably going to change. What's changing these schools is student voice. Great, Nick. Thank, thank you. It's, I, I, I'm sure you're feeling the same way I am as the whole team's like proud parents here of, of seeing what's happened with our demonstration sites and how they grow. and. And now they continue to grow because one of the places that was last month that we talked about was Saw North American in LA Unified. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, the piece that I did not mention is is Sweden, which will be coming on board actually next September. So, you know, from Sweden to Dubai to LA to, to Idaho to everywhere else kind of in between. Um, I want to make sure we, we leave some, some time for some questions here. Um, I have Lisa Landy with me, who's the director of the Teacher Voice and Aspirations International Center, which is like three times in a row I got that title right. Uh, and I've asked her just to say a, a couple words, and in the meantime, um, they'll give us about five minutes, and I, I, I'm going on, I'm seeing these different people from different places, and there's so many different states and countries represented, I love it. I see my Lizzie from, from Dallas, um, who's on who's on board with us, which is actually pretty cool. Um, we'll be seeing relatively soon because I go to Dallas, not because of the schools, but because I like Lizzie and they have great barbecue. Um, <laughs> and, and she's shaking her head. I can see her in Texas now going, oh, man. Um, but let, let me if you could bring up um, Lisa Landy. I'm going to shift computers because we're actually using Lisa's computer as well. Um, so Zach, if you could bring up Lisa, possibly, or I can just turn my computer on. You. Can you see Lisa? Oh no, that's your computer, right? Oh, coming. Yes. I'll turn mine off. Yep. You good? Okay, hold on. Now. Okay, we're good. Oh, I don't need to Would you like a close up? No, how how early is it? <laughs> it's really, it's really early. Um, no, it's a uh, thanks for us. It's been a great couple of days, actually a great couple of weeks, and we've had the opportunity to do a lot of focus groups with students and with teachers. And it's um, on this, on one. this one. All right. This is like like NBC. I camera know. one, camera That's two. Right. Andy and I are gonna leave now and take <laughs> a. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's what's really interesting is is that the mess. There seems to be so many themes that are consistent in the conversations that we're having with teachers, whether it's in Dubai or England or Idaho or um, wherever we're working with teachers. But we hear this um, immense care, love, concern for their students um, and a real interest in becoming engaged, becoming having greater opportunities to have decision making within their school community and to really make a difference. And then we hear the same thing from the kids. And so I love what Mickey was just talking about, about really viewing each other as, as learning partners. And that's the conversation we're engaging in, in the sites that we're working with currently. And then we have a number of sites. I'm glad that some individuals have been able to join this webinar tonight from, or I guess, what is it? Tonight, tomorrow, I don't even know. Whatever, whatever time of day it is, where everybody it's is. It's not tomorrow, it's yesterday. Tomorrow. That's right. Um, <laughs> but it's, it, yeah. I, <laughs> I love this venue where we can come together and really learn from each other. And thanks to people who are from the sites like Lizzie and Dallas. And um, I think there are some folks on from Iowa and Georgia, which are both sites that we're getting ready to embark in, in additional teacher voice work with in the next couple of months. And um, I think it's a great benefit to be able to hear from and learn from those that have been engaged in the work. And um, just today we were talking about how it's, it's not a, a cart or horse issue. It's not a teacher voice, a student voice issue first. We're always, as a team, talking about both of those things at the same time. And it's just really important for us to focus. And in some places, they enter uh, different entry points. They enter the conversation. 
through the lens of teacher voice and other places through student voice and then and then we're we're connecting those pieces and, and flip -flop, flip flopping the focus always with these same frameworks, the same guiding principles and conditions that we're working on together as a, as a team. So um, it's been a, it's been a wild ride the last couple of months um, and I'm really thankful to the, the learning partners that we have out in the field for the, the sites that we're working with on Teacher Voice and look forward to expanding that work here in Dubai and, and in lots of other places around the world. Wow. That's good? That was, was really, that quick? Yeah, that was actually quick right. and insightful. Um, what, Okay, so this again. So we only have a, a couple minutes left, and I, I want to make sure Andy has got the last word since he is the one staying up the latest. Um, and uh, it is, it I'm, actually, not, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I'm just staying up now because I don't even know where I am. Um, but maybe just kind of oh look here, I mean, it's cheap right there. And you thought we were making this up from Dubai. But that's actually kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, we invited him, but he, he was busy. Um, <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. Um, but we, anyway. we did have uh, we did have a guest from the local government the other night at our parent presentation. Yeah, uh, they were they were here. Uh, we we sent out a press release, and and uh, the local uh, uh, agency uh, known as the Knowledge and Human Development Authority. A that's very that's auspicious <laughs> name. Uh, they they sent a couple representatives, uh, and, and uh, I think they left very impressed. Yeah. They, 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 and they're not easy to impress, and they would not have said something if they were not impressed. Yeah. So that that gives you any feedback. They yeah. know they're not just nice to come up and say hi. Yeah. Uh, they would be like, we're out of here, yeah. and and would have just kind of stolen off the night. So uh, it, it it was nice. It was very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I, I mean, I, for us, I, I guess here at uh, UAS, I'm, I'm very, very excited about this, this possibility. Um, I, 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 at first was feeling like I was sort of in the sales mode with my faculty a little bit a couple weeks ago, and then it transitioned to sort of a discussion, and now it's a, um, a moderating of enthusiasm. Yeah, it's you know, a, we're you know, in a right? full-on learning mode. Yeah, right. right. It's like, you know, there's, there's people who are saying, well, why are we going to wait until next August. I'm like, well, we've got a lot going on. I don't know if you've noticed. <laughs> so uh, you know, and 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 you know, and, and these are the same people, of course, that in, in typical, uh, yeah. the same people who are saying, "Come on, let's 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 slow down. We're doing too much. We're doing too much." But I think people are starting to see the the that this isn't an add-on. This is a this is a supplement. This is a support for the the right things we should be doing with kids. And um, and you know, and at the end of the day, we have a big literacy focus at our school this year, and they're excited about the natural link that this brings to the literacy uh, for our for our kids and for our community. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you will all soon see that um, Andy will be our spokesperson for now, Quiza. <laughs> um, but but thank you everyone for for joining, and, and obviously for for Andy and and Lisa actually, because obviously it's one o'clock for you as well. So. <laughs> Uh, thank you for this commitment to make this work, and, and thanks to our colleagues who actually span from Oregon to Dubai, which is which is pretty amazing. Go and, Oregon! And, yeah, <laughs> Andy is from Oregon, so Eric, I didn't even give you a chance to jump on yet. But if there are questions and things, either send them to me, Mickey. Um, I don't know later. I mean, I could go later, but quite frankly, I literally don't want to go later. Um, I want to go to bed. Uh, <laughs> um, but but thank you all for, for joining on. I, I remain incredibly proud and thankful not only to the demonstration sites, but to my amazing team. Uh, they are gifted. And you heard from a couple of them tonight, uh, Chris, Mickey, and Lisa. I know Brian is on, and Susan is, and Lou Harper who kind of put this together, and, uh, and Deb. The whole, the whole crew, quite frankly, it's, it's a gift to be working with. So thank you to them. Thank you for you. And I say... Good night. Have a good afternoon, people in California. Good morning. Um, I'm not sure what this is. I'm up in about four hours. <laughs> That's uh, exactly. Here. Oh, and, and wait, we have a meeting in five. Yeah, so, we have a meeting in five. That's so, right, uh, so thank you, everyone. Uh, Zach and, and Shindig, thank you again for just making this as seamless and, and as comfortable as possible. Um, so appreciative to Shindig and Corwin for, for putting this all together for us. So, thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye.